titled the presentation Violence Prevention Through Urban Upgrading, Sustainable Neighborhoods of Farfetch Stream for Low Income Areas, Experiences from Kyle Leacher. Cape Town, as many of you will know Cape Town, has got about three and a half million people, 3.7 to be precise. It's about three times the area of Singapore. Uh, we got an annual budget of about 2.2 billion euros uh, and about 23,000 employees. It is uh, called the best run metro in South Africa. Uh, we got it for the last seven years, uh, we got uh, unqualified audits, which is not the norm in South Africa. These are the, the, those are the pictures that uh, you usually see of Cape Town with Table Mountain, one of the seven uh, new wonders of the world, and the 20, 2010 World Cup uh, soccer stadium in the front. But I would like to take you to another part of Cape Town, called the Cape Flats in Kailiche. Kailiche stands for New Home in Isid Kosa. And this is a typical area. This is a public space in a township, as we call that. So large residential area dormitories uh, developed uh, during apartheid. Stormwater detention pond. And you can imagine if you go in the morning or in the evening how safe you are as you go through that. So it's a crime hotspot. We got about, in 2004, before we started the program, we got about 358 murders in Kailiche that tra translate to about 75 murders per 100,000. Uh, over a four-year process, we'll be able, it's the, uh, the very same area. Sorry. It's the very same area. We were able to transform this area into the nicest urban park in partnership with many organizations, such as Foot uh, FIFA and Football for Hope, as well as the community. So what are we trying to do with the public spaces? Public spaces are key for us. We're trying to positively occupy perceived dangerous spaces. I think at the beginning of a process, you must be quite clear. There are two ways you can go, uh, how to make uh, spaces safer. You can either go the route, the traditional route of city improvement districts, where you say through a privatization of public space, you increase safety. Or you can go the other route, which we call communalization, and we call it, uh, in, in South Africa, we got this nice concept of Ubuntu. It's a, it's a Zulu world, and it uh, basically stays for multi-level solidarity. And uh, we, were, we have chosen the second route. So what, what did we come up? We came up with a vision, and our vision stands for to build safe and sustainable neighborhoods by reducing social, cultural, economic, and institutional exclusions of former townships, all with the aim to improve the quality of life. These are the project partners. It's an area-based approach, so it's very similar to what people are doing here in Singapore. It's an area-based approach. We've got uh, three primary partners. It's the city of Cape Town, as the municipality. It's the German Development Bank, which works on behalf of the German federal government. And it's a civic organization called the Kailiche Development Forum. And then we've got a lot of secondary partners, and you can see that private institutions, the remaining two levels of government, the province and national. It's a three-phased approach. So we got three phases of the project, and currently we're negotiating phase four uh, between the partners. This is the area of Kailiche, as you can see. It's an area of about 700 people. And we were tasked to work in three areas initially. The area of Harare, which I will go a little bit more in detail. Then Kuyasa, where sub-council chair Sotashi is, uh, is home. Uh, and Site C, which is the oldest part of Kailiche. As the project has been relatively successful, the city asked us to see into whether the methodology can be uh, also applied in informal areas. So we got three informal areas in Kailiche and two outside Kailiche added to the project. I will talk a little bit about Monmore BC Park, which is at the bottom, as you can see. Our strategy is a four-prone strategy. Uh, the first one is around prevention. When we talk about prevention, we talk about the World Health Organization life cycle approach. So how can we prevent crime for children between three and up to going to adults up to 35? That, that's what we call the life cycle approach. The second one is uh, what we borrowed primarily from Latin America. It's around community cohesion. So how can we get uh, the community galvanized around the project? How can we mobilize the assets within the community, as it's called recently. So we talk a lot about mobilization, the community delivery of services, and around the management of spaces, because it's one of the issues that we have faced uh, in, in South Africa. The third one is the traditional approach. We call that protection. That's your 
traditional policing approach. So how does the police work with the communities and how do we get access to the legal and justice system? As well as how can we as planners, urban designers and architects uh, change the built environment? And last but not least, it's research and knowledge management. Knowledge management is with a lot of partners where we partner with two Cape Town-based universities, with American and German universities, to basically bring back uh, the, the knowledge that we generate and try to disseminate it. We've got a five-step methodology, and it will be the last slide where I take you through a little bit of a lecture, and then we see a couple of pictures. Uh, the first step is to go into social compact and profiling of an area. Before we go into an area, it's important to have a uh, consultative and a mature and representative local leadership, but also to know what the baseline is. So what is the situation, the status quo when we start? Second element is the planning. Planning is important to develop and galvanize your community around the ideas of what you want to do in the, in the project. We call that a local area strategy or community action plan. That community action plan filters through the sub-councils straight into the integrated development plan for the whole city. The integrated development plan is your master plan, is your plan for the city that allows you access to resources and allows you the business plans to be submitted to provincial and national as well as uh, budget allocations. So it's very important to have that one. Implementation, you get two things with implementation, assets, and it could be physical assets or it could be non-physical assets. So it's buildings and people. Operation, maintenance, and management is crucial in South Africa. It's relatively easy to build new buildings or new facilities, but it is a, is a real schlep to operate and maintain them. So we started a lot of partnerships specifically in the community, which we called community delivery of services, and also with the police around the project, which is called the Neighborhood Safety Officer, which is borrowed from Amsterdam in Holland. Monitoring and evaluation is the fifth and a very important one. Quality assurance is important. Are we successful in what we're trying to achieve? And are we feeding back the information and lessons learned into the next project cycle? We, assume, we, we, we presume yes. And if we follow those uh, five steps, steps, we get closer to a sustainable neighborhood. So I would like to take you through some of the, uh, some of the results that we have achieved so far. We spoke earlier about a murder rate. The absolute murder number went down by 33%. If you look at the murder rate, it went down by 37% over the project period. We have developed a deep-rooted trust between the community and the program, and we brought the notion of volunteerism to right to the forefront of the, of the program. So we, on, a, on, a, on a weekly basis, there's about 200 people that volunteer for the project, for the community, for themselves to maintain things, to keep things safe. Operation maintenance and management is seen as an income source for local communities to keep the local economy running. We have provided about 20 public facilities. Uh, about 250 uh, local, uh, local businesses have benefited from the project. More than 50,000 people have uh, benefited from uh, gender-based violence initiatives or anti-gender-based violence initiatives. And on an average, on a monthly average, about 120 people are seeking legal advice through our partnerships with the University of the Western Cape. I want to show you a second picture. This is a typical square in a residential area in a township. What you can see here, it's very easy. South Africa is very good at developing houses. We have built about 2 million houses in the last 17 years, which I think is a world record. It's unheard of. But what we missed is basically the public facilities. We have delivered numbers, but not quality, not quality of life, I mean. And that's what you can see here. So you can see on the blue roof is, for instance, a supermarket that comes in. There's a pension payout point, And then you see sort of uh, semi-structured offices for, for city officials. Over a five-year process, it's the same space. We were able to transform the space again. And you can see the methodology that, what I was, that I was talking about. In the center, you see the House of Learning. The House of Learning combines early childhood development center, a youth-targeted library, and adult-based education. You can see in the, with the large roof, it's a bulk buying facility for small shops. It's a distribution center that ensures that uh, local generated funding circulates within the community. At the moment, a rent comes in or money comes in on the Friday, leaves on a, leaves on a Saturday. 
while in other parts of the city, we got the, the rent turning about 17 times in the areas where, we live, where I live, 17 times to one time, which is not good. We want to ensure that the rent circulates in Kailicha. You can see at the forefront so-called so -called live work units, double story buildings, which bring eyes onto the street, eyes onto the square, and provide security for the square and for the community. We've got a partnership with the with a, with a youth development agency that will start a youth center on the left-hand side. This takes you through, through the crime mapping, what we always do, and we spoke about uh, crowd, uh, uh, crowdsourcing early on today. It's the social compact. So this gives you the crime hotspots. This is the major pedestrian walkways. It's an idea of the community to have, to have every 500 meters a safe house. And that is, these are all informants to the urban design framework plan. You can see the urban design framework plan focuses around the public domain. We are pretty proud about the operation and maintenance. Before we started, those are the areas under maintenance. And after five years of implementation, you can see that the urban design framework plan, the public domain is now well managed by the community. Which, which has a direct link to your perception of safety, about 48% feel safer than a year ago, which is a massive achievement. This is an example of a community action plan. I don't want to go into details. It gives you from the left to the right the areas, sort of, sort of the sectors, and from top to down, the short, medium, and long-term interventions. Short interventions are single-focused, relatively simple ones, and the long-term are the more complex one where you need integration of various line departments. Just quickly touching on to the informal settlement upgrading program, I've chosen Monroe BC Park, a settlement of about 25,000 to 26,000 residents, with children between three and six uh, of about 2,800. This is the urban design framework plan for this particular settlement. You can see on the left-hand side that we provide basic services, and you can see on the, on the, along the major pedestrian route, uh, or the major, major transport route at the north of the, at the top of the picture, we can see that becomes our economic route. It's a bus route, it's a taxi route, so we feel it's a transportation and a mobility route which we want to re-emphasize uh, and uh, with economic development. And you can see a second clear distinct route through the neighborhood, and that becomes more your civic, your pedestrianized uh, route. Along this pedestrianized route, we'll put sporting facilities, we will put crashes, we will put public facilities. And you see those little red dots. Those red dots are at the moment public water points. And what are we trying to do in this development is that we turn it upside down. I've shown you a picture earlier where we usually provide housing and public spaces later. In this program, we do it the other way around. We define, we negotiate the public space first, and then we come to uh, the residential units. Of course, we work with uh, very low-skilled communities. You have to bring 3D plans, and 3D plans are models. And that's one of the groups that we consulted uh, in achieving the spatial reconfiguration plan, as we call that. This gives you a little bit of an example how we do a public space, a very localized, very small intervention. And this intervention is targeted for the children between three and six around the water, water point. That's when they started, before we, start, before we started our intervention, it was group play by early childhood development service providers within the space. And now it's a very simple intervention with a tree, a little bit of hardening, a couple of seeds, and a management concept. But it improves the quality of life. You can see on this map how we want to roll out that. And you can see on the right-hand side three distinct uses that we would like to emphasize. It's the early childhood development outreach. It's a business and income or income focus. And it's the more civic focus that we want to, uh, that we want to emphasize. So in terms of mainstreaming, how successful have we been? Certain parts of the po program have developed into policy. For instance, the, city, uh, the city's uh, urban design policy is largely built on, on the VPOU. Uh, around the early childhood development, we're breaking new ground in informal settlements and a community delivery of services with the services line departments. Program has been replicated to other areas. Uh, notably to Hanover Park and Menenberg and certain parts of Guguletu. And it has uh, achieved a major boost in the last couple of months through the mayor's urban regeneration program, where an additional 10 areas have been added to the program. We're replicating to other areas within South Africa, two metros. And in phase four, we would like to replicate to smaller towns in the Western Cape province. 
methodology I have shown has been replicated to informal settlement, and we're working against provincial objectives and national outcomes. Uh, so the project is lodged on provincial and national side. Internationally, uh, UN Habitat have approached us. They would like to start a center of excellence around safety as a public good, and would like to invite you to become partners of that center because we are looking for many partners in order to uh, share the information and the knowledge. In conclusion, I think there's a couple of uh, key learnings from the project. And our key learnings are, is that one has to, has to have a strong and an inclusive vision. One needs to work on a human scale, and I think that was common to all the presentations so far. And it needs to be on multi-levels, within a very localized intervention, within a project, and within the overall program. You have to take the people along with you. It's work in a transversal team, and such a comprehensive program can only be done in partnership with many people. And that's also partnerships on all levels. You have seen at the program who the partners are. It's the community, it's the local municipality, and it's an international donor. You need to have competent leaders. You need to have competent leaders on the community level, on the political level, and there we got very competent leaders in the businesses as well as in the professional team. And you need to define the hierarchy of spaces. In South Africa, we got private space or public space and private space. We're lacking the transitional zone, the semi-public or the semi-private space. It needs to work towards sustainability. And I think what, what I've shown here in the presentation is an example of communalizing in order to improve the quality of life. Thank you very much.